This tutorial is of the Grim Reaper for Halloween. My model today is Billy and you will have seen him before in my zombie tutorial. He's also the twin brother of Jack who is in my Mad Hatter and Handsome Jack tutorial. The boys have actually got their own YouTube channel so I will link that in the description of the videos. To start with I'm using my small angled lip brush and I'm mapping out using some matte black eyeshadow the shape of the skull for the Grim Reaper. As you can see around the eyebrow area I've gone to a high point as opposed to doing a skeletal socket bone which is usually quite circular. I'm doing a high arch to it and it's going to give it more of an evil appearance. The best thing you can do when mapping out a skeletal shape is to get a reference image. I typed in a Grim Reaper skull and got up a digital version so I'm copying it from that. It's up to you how much detail you want to put into your skull. A look like this is quite time consuming so you need to bear that in mind when you're choosing your reference image. There are lots on Google to choose from. You can use something that's quite simplistic or you can do something that's a little bit more detailed like the one I've chose to do. So I'm looking at my reference image and I'm just mapping in similar shapes around the face. Now remember the image I'm working from is a digital version of the Grim Reaper. So it's not a realistic skull. You can work from more realistic reference images, so that's completely up to you. But the one I've chosen is to mimic a Grim Reaper. I'm gonna be using Cryland's Supra Color, and I'm gonna be mixing the shades 521, 517 and white, so we can get a nice bone shade. This is a cream product, and again, I like to use these. The same reason I have done in loads of other tutorials is that I can blend on top of these really well. You can just use a white face paint, or you can mix a couple of face paints together to create a bone shade and just work with that as opposed to a cream product. I'm working this kind of in between the lines. Although it's generally going to be going over the entire face, I want to work around the lines. You can do it the opposite way around. You can apply the foundation or the cream product or the face paint first and then map out on top. I just prefer to map everything out first and then work around the lines. I've mapped out a hollow section on the cheeks which I'm going to be painting around. If you look at reference images of real skulls, this isn't actually that hollow unless you're looking from the front of the face. This is actually where your back teeth would be visible. The reason we get this kind of dip and hole is because your zygomatic bone and your maxilla meet your jaw bone where they're separate from the very front of your face you get a hole. But we emphasise this when doing makeup and face paint because we want it to look more creepy. So I filled in all the areas of the bone structure that I want to be in the bone colour and as you can see we've got this shape. Next we're going in with a black face paint. You could use the black cream if you want but I don't want this to smear anywhere and I don't want it to crease on the eyes so I'm going to use a black face paint for this. Another reason I've chosen to use the black face paint is because it will give a matte finish when it dries. Cream products give off a shine and need to be set with a powder so you could do that with a black eyeshadow that's totally up to you but again I've chosen to use the black face paint. Don't worry about going directly under the eyes until it's dried on the top eyelid as you will get creasing with the face paint if you get your model or yourself to look up before it's dried. I'm now painting black onto the nose and the reason for this is to make it look as if the nose is no longer there and that it's just a dark hole. But we are going to leave a line down the centre of the nose and we're going to paint this in the bone colour and this is going to mimic the Voma bone. And the two shapes above this on the top of the bridge of the nose are called the nasal bone. So that's a little insight as to why I'm creating these shapes. Now you don't have to do every bone or every detail on the face but if you get the generic ones that are associated with a skull then you can't go far wrong. You just adapt areas such as the shape of the eye sockets to make it look more like your character such as the Grim Reaper. So here I'm just painting underneath Billy's eyes. Next I'm taking Supra Colour 043 which is a brown shade and I'm mixing a little bit of that to the bone colour I've still got on the back of my hand and we're going to create a mottled appearance to the skull. The reason I'm doing this is so that my Grim Reaper skull looks a little bit more sinister and not so smooth and perfect. I'm simply using a small detailer brush just to apply the product in dots and then I'm using my finger to pat that onto the skin. This will help to distribute that colour in an uneven pattern and help with that mottled appearance. I'm concentrating that colour onto the edges of the lines that we've drawn onto the face. This is going to help to create a more curved appearance to the bone as opposed to it looking flat. Now I'm taking some of the white Supra Colour on an eyeliner brush so it's nice and fine and I'm highlighting all the raised points of the bones. So on the nasal bone that we've drawn in, I'm highlighting the inner edge and this is going to make it look more prominent. I'm also adding some of that white to the brow bone area. Remember this is the Grim Reaper style so we want to make it look slightly angry. Whereas the generic skull's brow bone is slightly more rounded around the eye socket, we've created more of an arch to our eye socket because again we want it to look more sinister. 
You need to think about contour and highlight when you're doing this. I'm applying the highlight to the centre of these areas as I want them to stand out and look more curved and more prominent. So in conjunction with the shading, we're creating a more three dimensional appearance to the skull. I'm applying the light colour the same way I did with the dark colour. I'm patting it on with the brush and then using my finger to disperse the colour. To create some more depth to that brow bone and make it look a little bit more sunken where the eye socket is, I'm blending on some matte brown eyeshadow just to the seam line and this is going to make it look like the eye socket's really sunken and the brow bone's really rounded. Using the colour that we mixed together for the mottle appearance, I'm applying that just above the nasal bone and I'm blending that in between the brow bone. I'm using this colour as opposed to the bone colour that we originally applied as we want this area to look slightly set back from the brow bone and the nasal bone. On either side of the bridge of the nose, I'm adding a little bit of that matte brown eyeshadow and this is going to make that area look more pinched. Now I'm taking a matte black eyeshadow and I'm creating furrow lines and then I'm blending them using a soft pencil brush and this is just going to enhance the angry appearance to the eyes. The eye socket isn't a definitive line, it's actually quite soft because it's a shadow. So we're applying a little bit of the matte black and matte brown mixed together and I'm going around that circumference of the eyes, just softening it ever so slightly. And this is going to help with the curvature of the eye socket. The Grim Reaper is known for wearing a cloak, so we will be putting one on Billy, but we want to also define the outside area of the skull. So although the cloak will cover the hair and the ears, there is a chance that you might see the outline of the skull, so it's best to paint this in black. I'm also filling in the cheek area that is hollow and again I'm using the black face paint to do all this. If you want to go as the Grim Reaper without a cloak or just as a skull or as a skeleton then you can apply a bald cap and go over your entire face and then you wouldn't have to black out the outside edges like this. To give the Grim Reaper more of a disturbing and dark appearance to his face I'm enhancing the top of the forehead on the frontal bone and sweeping down to the top of the brow bone. I'm working a soft fluffy blending brush in circular motions over that matte brown eyeshadow and that's going to create that nice blended shadow appearance. I'm taking my small lip brush which is nice and fine and I'm dipping it in some of that matte black eyeshadow and I'm going back over the lines that we originally placed on the face. And then to make these lines look more like cracks or join lines, you want to shade on one side of them. This is going to create a little bit of depth and make them look like they're slightly separated, so it's like a shadow. I know a lot of the methods of this look is quite repetitive, so I do apologise if I sound like I'm saying the same thing over and over, but you have to apply the same method to all aspects of the skull, but you're just creating different shapes. The two upside down teardrop shapes that I'm drawing on now are called the infraorbital foramen. I'm using a tiny fine paintbrush just dipped in the matte brown eyeshadow just to pencil on the shape of the teeth. Now you can really take your time doing this and make them look really really good. I just kind of got them on, painted them and then just shaded around them. Just they resemble teeth but you can make them look as realistic or unrealistic as you like. I'm using the white Supra colour to paint in the teeth. You can use this or you can use a white face paint. Face paint will tend to move a lot more if you're drinking, whereas I find the cream tends to last quite well. If you're mixing a lot of colours, it can look a little bit muddy after a while, so you do have to be careful either way. I'd advise drinking for a straw if you're going to be wearing a look like this. Now I'm drawing in the alveolar bone. This is the part that forms and supports the sockets of the teeth. So we'll come back to the teeth in a moment. I'm now going around the outside of the nasal bone using the matte black eyeshadow on the fine liner brush. Then once I've lined it, I'm using my brush just to fade the colour outwards and making it look more defined. So although we've got the realistic elements of the skull, we also want to add in the characteristics. So I'm adding in some crease lines just above the nose. Obviously this is a skull so it wouldn't have these in reality. But again, this is a character and I want it to look like the Grim Reaper and I want it to look evil and creepy. So this is why I'm doing that. So as we've done with the maxilla on top, we're going to do with the mandible at the bottom. We're creating these socket lines where the teeth would sit. And then to make them look a little bit more three-dimensional and ripply, I'm adding some shading in between these lines using the matte brown eyeshadow. You can really take your time with this and make it look really realistic and really, really effective. Poor Billy had been sitting there for quite a while because we had to stop and offload footage for 20 minutes. So by this point, I just wanted to get the look done. So I just carried on with the shading in between the teeth and also a line right across the middle separating the mandible from the maxilla. And I'm adding some shading around the nose and also in between the lines of the teeth again just to add in some extra definition. 
Around these infraorbital dents in the face, I'm drawing a line mimicking the shape that's already there but set slightly further back and this is leaving a white rim just around the edge which makes it look like the bone protrudes out slightly, thereby creating that dent and shadow. I'm applying the same technique around the socket of the eyes and this is going to create the appearance that there's a slight lip and as if it curves over because the highlight would be on the very top of that socket bone. So just to enhance that highlight I'm talking about, I'm adding in a little bit of the white Supra colour, just to the very rim. You only have to concentrate this on the bottom half of the eye socket, you don't need to do it on the top where the brow bone is because the light wouldn't be reflecting off that area. I'm now using the black face paint just to define the area between the zygomatic bone and the mandible. I'm adding white Supra colour to the body of the mandible, which is the chin area, and I'm just patting that in with my finger. I'm also adding that along the jawline. I'm drawing a wavy line along the front of the chin and then I'm just working that in circular motions to blend that out and then I'm creating small tiny V shapes just above that line that we've drawn on and then I'm blending these upwards like we did with the top set and this is just defining the socket area for the teeth. Going back in with that black face paint I'm blacking out the bottom half of the chin and also around the jawline. Using the matte brown, I'm going along the bottom half of the jaw with a fluffy blending brush. I am just creating a little bit of shadow, and this is giving the illusion that the jaw bone's curved and making it look more three-dimensional. The same technique is being applied to the zygomatic bone, very similar to defining your cheekbone. As I'm always saying, the best way to get a nice gradient when you're blending is to work in small circular motions. I'm also darkening the outer corner of the forehead. No Grim Reaper skull would be complete without some cracks. I'm placing the brush down on the skin and then pulling it outwards ever so gently creating some small waves. I'm applying these in different areas, not being overly symmetrical, but also not going over the top with them, but you can apply as many or as little as you prefer. And then once all the cracks are in place I just add a little bit of shading either side of them and then all that was left to do was just darken the inside of Billy's nostrils around his eyes, then pop in some mesh contact lenses and a cloak and we were done. So I hope you've liked my Grim Reaper, please give me a thumbs up if you have. I hope you all have a wonderful Halloween, if you've missed any of my previous tutorials you can click on any of these now and it will take you to them. I've also got links in the description bar where you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. 